curiosities. Yes, Matt. Um, I'll try to say this. Um, what I noticed was uh, with Jackie was <clears throat> when Jackie uh, was talking to me yes. in the conversation, is that Jackie in no way tried to problem solve anything. So she tried not to problem solve Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yes. And actually, when I realised that she was not going to do that, Yes. I felt so comfortable. I was just popping out ideas. Excellent. Popping out, and she would just talk to me a little bit more, and mm -hmm. almost like I've got another solution for sure. myself. Sure. And I felt that she wasn't even going to attempt to do that. Excellent. And once that happened, it was like, wow, more and more ideas came. Excellent. So I, I thought that was once the fear of no, there isn't a solution there at all. It's never going to come. Mm -hmm. so I felt like things were just formulating very quickly. Fantastic. Good job. I felt like I had a solution. I just wanted to hit him over the head with it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. And this comes from, uh, and this will this will extend itself the more you interact this way. Yeah. We find these solutions and sometimes it's like a um, an aha moment for us. We think, oh, I just really want to tell you this. I know this solution will work for you but we can't do it, okay? Because if we, if we do mention the solution or offer it even, just for now anyway, we'll look at things later, um, it could be the very wrong one, or you offer it to Matt, he absorbs it, likes it, but it gets connected in the wrong way, mm -hmm. and he fantasizes what, you, what he thinks you said, and ends up in a worse situation than what he was. That could also be an issue as well, okay? Now, this is great feedback for you as well, and because you've done a lot of practice uh, with therapy in general, hypnosis in general, as soon as you take away the idea that I'm not gonna offer any solutions, okay, we'll look more through this in the next two days, I'm not gonna try and aim for any certain thing, you know, I'm not gonna aim in that direction or this direction, and again, we'll look at many things on how to do this. Your client gets put in a position where you're so uh, uh, in the moment with them that the unconscious mind goes into fix-it mode anyway, and you allow it to do that without interrupting it. As soon as you start offering solutions or saying, well, do this, feel like this, think in these ways, you're going to interrupt those unconscious moments. Okay, and you probably found with Matt, as he said, did you notice that he was popping in and out of little trances all along the way. This is a great place to be. This is the essence of conversational hypnosis. Now, you couldn't prepare that, could you? You couldn't script that. And within the 10 minutes I gave you from an interaction, he's popping in and out of trance already without even you trying to do anything to see how that takes pressure off you as the hypnotist as well, which is way more important for us. As soon as we put pressure on ourselves, we put pressure on ourselves to perform. We put pressure on ourselves to try and solve the issue. It's a very hard place to be as a hypnotist, and it's not one that's worthwhile even looking into. Does that make sense, guys? So it's great feedback, okay? Any other little bits of feedback along the way? Um, I was the uh, client. Client, yep. yep. You're a I, I just felt there was like a really strong connection after a lot Excellent. of questions. So much to the point that I couldn't take my eyes off her pupils. Excellent. I can see it dilating. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and I saw it dilating. And you were the client. And I was the client. And I, I, I um, yeah, I couldn't take my eyes off her. It was just Excellent. there. Um, I know I looked away, but every time I looked back, I looked back at that point. Yes. Was, um, I felt like towards, I don't know what point it was, but at some point I just, I was like going, I'm confused. Tell me where to go. Yes. I was like, give me something. I, I don't know how to solve this. Yes. And yeah, I, I felt that from the... Yes. And it's very, very common. And where Jasmine would have taken you was to a place where even if you said, tell me something, she would have said, nope. Because it's not her role. Now, this is important to highlight as well. Your clients, you take them as such a... That wasn't my mind. I didn't yeah. Know. Yeah. But the very fact you're thinking about it. I don't know. What yeah. That. And that's what your clients will stumble across as well. They'll be in this place where anything can go. They're so excited to be here, but they just think, I oh, just tell me something. I'm ready to take it on board. And it's very easy for us as hypnotists to feel that and sense that and then say, well, I'll just give you a little bit of advice. Again, you could be taking them away from where they are, where that'll naturally unfold itself anyway, and the aha moment will come out naturally anyway, because you're in the fix-it mode. 
Okay, so this is an important note as well. If your client looks like they want you to tell them something or give them offer any advice at any point, you still have to restrict yourself. The very fact you're in a place where there is nothing going on, where anything can happen, that's exactly where therapy gets done. That's exactly where hypnosis is. Okay, um, so you did a very good job. And the absorption of attention is what took you there so quickly, the very fact you couldn't keep your eyes off her, that's the unconscious connection we've talked about over and over about. It's a weird place to be, right? It is. We're not there yet. We're, by day two, we'll have a look at how we can do that. But right now, I want to get you guys comfortable because this is the common uh, concern or query or question I get asked is, I can get them there okay, I just don't know what to do. Okay, or what can I do? What's the best thing I can do? Right now, I want you guys feeling comfortable with doing nothing, you know, getting really lazy. You just take them into trance, and we're not even all the way down trance. We haven't even got to that bit yet. But just a place where these thinking processes can take place without being interrupted. Once you get comfortable being there, therapy actually adds more speed to it because the solutions will just come out of nowhere. Does that make sense? Okay. So with that in mind, I want to move on to our next demonstration, which is going to be quite a long one. And now let's look at specifically being this is a seminar and spotting unconscious moments. Unconscious moments. Okay. So... The same demonstration will happen. We'll get two people coming up the front. We'll have one therapist, one client. I'll coach you through it. It's going to be the same place we left off, which is if you get to a point where you don't know what to say, you don't know, you know, where do I take this? That's what I'm here for, and I'll offer you some sort of solutions. But the thing I want you to pay close attention to as a therapist is how many unconscious moments do you see? Okay, let's get to that point first. Okay, let's see as a group, but also the, the therapist and the client, are you seeing unconscious moments? Are they more apparent to you? When we start seeing a lot of them, then I'll show you what to do with them. But let's start from real basics. Let's look out for them, hunt them, if you will, and then we'll start collecting them. Okay, so um, with that in mind, that's going to be your only part of this role, is um, we do need one client, one therapist. So who wants to come up? and have a chat up front. Okay, Jazz, do you want to come up? Okay, give a round of applause. Have a seat. Again, we do need one more person. Yep, coming up, Gary. Okay, give a round of applause. Are you happy to use these or do you want to use the other ones? Yep, okay, so what we'll do, guys, we'll just swap these chairs over quickly. Okay, quick grab some black chairs from you guys. There you go, I'll grab one more, just up the back here. Just have a seat, guys. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you, Phil. It's a race, who gets there first? Excellent, thank you very much. All right, yeah, there we go. Front row seat. Okay, um, so who wants to be the client? Who wants to be the therapist? Just so I know who to speak. Therapist. therapist, excellent. So, Carrie, you are now the client. Okay, so um, Jazz, your only role right now, yeah, your only role right now is to just question Carrie about her problem. Don't do anything with it, don't try and solve it, don't point in any direction. What I'm gonna be on the lookout for is all the unconscious moments that you miss, okay? If you get to a point where you think, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, we'll reflect back on the information and we'll just start to, uh, to tease out little bits and pieces and let's just see how we go with this, okay? Excellent, so go ahead. Hi Carrie, so what is the problem you wanna work through today? Um, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what is your weight doing for you at the moment? Um, nothing good. <laughs> um, I don't know what you mean. Okay. So, what would you get out of losing weight? I probably wouldn't be in as much pain. Okay. Um, be able to do a bit more, um, be healthier. Yeah. Okay. So you'd be in less pain, be able to do more, and be healthier. Mm -hmm. okay. So what has stopped you previously? Oh. Um, lots of things. My husband is my biggest downfall because. How does he stop you? Um, he will be on a diet and then he'll go out and buy junk food. Okay. <laughs> um, and I've used the weight as a punishment. 
as yeah, well. Punishment for mm-hmm. what? Um, guilt to um, um, cover up different things in life. Yeah. So what are you covering up with the weight? Um, I suppose how I feel. Um, yeah. Um, and pause right there. Brilliant job. So where's Kerry out right now? In an unconscious moment. Something's <laughs> happened. She's right on the edge of something. Okay. Um, now think about the types of questions that Jazz was asking. Nothing hypnotic, right? No confusion language, nothing like that at all. There's nothing going on at that very time. But right now we've got her to a place just by exploring the problem. Okay. Now, who started to think, well, I would love to be able to tell Kerry some solutions that maybe work for me in my weight loss journey? We all have them, but we know we can't do them. Okay. Um, how are you feeling right now as the hypnotist? Good. Excellent. How are you feeling right now as a client? Yeah. All good. So pick it up from there um, as naturally as you can. And then when we see some more unconscious moments, um, I'm going to start to offer you some things I want you to do with them and let's just see where it takes us. Okay. So as you think about that, what comes up for you? As I think about um, why um, sorry I lost what we were um, as, I'm, as I think about why I feel guilty or why yeah um, Um, hmm. And let's pause right here. Something interesting is happening right now, okay? Definitely an unconscious moment, but there's something so unconscious that Kerry can't find the words for, okay? Now, there's two things that can happen at this point. I've taught you guys previously, if they're on an unconscious moment, let them go in it, okay? But for now, I just want to offer some other solutions or other things we can do with this very thing. Okay, um, if we find our client can't find the right words or can't find a way to express it and Carrie's thinking, thinking that nothing's coming out, what do you think is going to happen to Carrie? She's definitely going to go deeper, which is fine, but what else do you think is going to happen or could happen to Kerry? Could get frustrated. Could get frustrated. So the conscious mind clicks back in and we lose that very trance. Does that make sense? Okay, and also this fact, because we've seen an unconscious moment, the first part of this little intervention I'm going to introduce is now we've seen one, let's figure out a couple of ways of how we can play with it, so to speak. Okay, the first place I wanted to think about is we need to draw attention to it. Okay, so you're going to have to probably pick it up again, you'll probably find Carrie's still in it, I can see it, which is good. Is when you see Carrie in an unconscious moment, just for now, what I would like you to do is offer what's called a process instruction. Okay, which is a simple, straightforward instruction like, oh, what's that? Or that's it, there you go. Or the classical Erickson thing, Erickson thing which is that's right. Use that all the time. Okay, so it's basically what it's telling to carry is wherever you are right now is good. Okay, um, and it's also letting the unconscious mind know that we can see you playing ball. Thank you, I'm going to address you to say, yep, I see you, you see me, we're in a good place. If, however, uh, from that, we see Kerry getting frustrated because she really wants to tell you, we're going to have to address that issue as well. Okay, so um, what I would like you to do to start fresh, and let's just see if we can get Kerry back to the same place, is just offer another question, and let's just see if the unconscious moment's still there or something else comes out of it. Okay, so you can clarify, you can backtrack, do whatever you want to do, but just remember those process instructions. So you were talking about um, feelings of guilt mm-hmm. in connection with your weight loss. Yeah. What else can you tell me about that? Uh, about the weight loss or the guilt? Like, yeah. Um, I, I suppose I, with my weight I use it to cover up um, hurt and guilt. and Covering up hurt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, guilt. Um, Disappointment. Right. Yeah, okay, disappointment. Yeah. yeah. 
um, that one. What just happened there? Um, that's it. Um, so when you think about that, mm -hmm. what comes up for you? Um, I suppose upset. Upset. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sadness. Sadness. Mm -hmm. um. So you're covering that up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what happens if you don't cover it? Pause right there. Excellent job so far. Mm -hmm. See so those little process instructions, see what they do. Okay, now we ended up coming out of this really, really nicely because there was no confusion from Kerry. As in, she wasn't thinking, well, I just can't figure this out. It's so frustrating. There was none of that. So we're in a good place. Okay. Um, the question you asked, although it could be a good question, it's almost heading towards solution orientated. We're not there yet. You sort of felt that when it came out. Okay. So what I would like you to do, well, what are you curious about right now? Let's do it really, really basically. What has Carrie told us? What has she not told us? And what do you think the issue really is? There's something underneath it that she's sad and guilty about, mm -hmm. which is why she's holding on to the weight. Yes. Okay. Now there's the bind right there. There's something that upsets Kerry, there's something that makes her feel guilty, um, but she's holding on to the weight because of that, which is basically like saying, I'm holding on to the bad stuff. Doesn't that make you curious about something? What's the bad stuff? Yeah, okay. Um, does that make you curious as well? Can you, it's very small, these are very small nuances. But you can hear that if you think about this logically, we hold on to good stuff, right? So why is Kerry holding on to the bad stuff? What's she protecting herself from? That's the question. That is the question. To be or not to be. Mm -hmm. So what I would like you to do is formulate that question, whatever you just thought of, and just see what it has to do with regards to everything else Kerry has said. So you mentioned that you're uh, covering up mm -hmm. some sadness and some guilt. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that? Um, well, the guilt that um, my son is terminal, what he has, um, even though I'm not a carrier, it was a mutant egg, so I blame myself for him having that. Okay. So. Um, just let us sit on that and just sit on that for a moment, Kerry. Now it's important at this time, and I will address this with Kerry, that you are happy to continue, mm -hmm. of course. Okay, so what I want you guys to take aware of, if you get to a client at this point, and Kerry knows she's completely safe, she knows that she's, she's trained with us enough, that if you find yourself with your client in this position, it, there's going to be something great that comes from this. We know this. We've seen it. We still want to let our clients know that, hey, is everything okay? Are you happy to continue? Or have you had enough for today? Because sometimes your client will say, look, I don't want to talk about this anymore today. I've, um, this is enough for me today. So excellent. We'll pick this up next session. Okay. Never do we want to push our clients and just think, you know what, if you get through this, something great will happen because we might not know that. So I do want you to take this on board in the professional place we are. When you're doing the demos with each other, if you find a client getting there, ask them, are you happy to continue? Okay. Just as something nice we can do for them. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So address it like so, just to make sure Kerry's 100% with it. Are you happy to continue with this now? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So... It was your egg mm -hmm. that that was defective. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So um, 
I blame myself for him not having a normal life. Okay. And let's pause right there. Something interesting happened right there. Did everyone hear what that was? Normal life. Something to do with normal life. Yeah. Now, you, you'd probably agree with this, Kerry, someone who has having weight issues, you don't feel like having a normal life. Mm -hmm. Do you see the metaphor in that, how encapsulated that is? What I'm curious about, hopefully you guys are on the same page as me, is what has the defective egg and her son been in the position that he is, what does that have to do with Kerry's weight loss journey? We could assume they're somehow intermingled, but we need to take out the assumption. So how would you do that? The reason she's smiling right now <laughs> is because the unconscious mind has gone, yes, finally. <laughs> okay, so you might even want to wonder out loud to yourself what one has to do with the other. This is an so idea. I wonder what your guilt over that has to do with your current weight situation? Um, well, I've used it as a punishment. Okay. So you're punishing yourself. Yeah. Um, and because of the years of caring, then um, I've damaged my body as well. Um, at as in physically, like with my back and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then there's sort of, um, I suppose, guilt because then the husband has had to take on more roles and he has now got the problems that I've got as well. Um, and then there's looking at other people our age and that they can just go out and do. And let's pause right there, okay? We're in a good place. So all Jasmine done right now is connected the two ideas together, okay? Don't know what the outcome from that is, and this is nothing against Kerry as well. This last stuff that came out is irrelevant. That's just a backwards rationalization that she's trying to sum up the guilt for something. Who's noticing that guilt, that theme keeps coming up? Nothing to do with the weight loss anymore, does it? It's, got a, it's a big part of it, I understand. I thought it was the best back to the normal life thing. Yep, there's something to do with that guilt. What we need to do is find out in the middle of it, what exactly does she mean by guilt? What's she feeling guilty about? Why, or to take out the question why, what made her think guilt is the best thing she can hold on to? What does guilt have to do with not achieving the weight? There's a lot of things happening. These are the things we need to